Welcome to episode 99 of Let's Talk Geek. In the show today, we've got Sean Dubry, who's sitting right behind me, talking about why the radio streaming statistics from NetDynamics are wrong, unfixable computers and why it's perilous to humankind, and we talk about Mass Effect 3's new DLC, extending the endings. Thanks for watching. <laughs> and yeah, that's going to be fun to, to get to. We do have a uh, random for the show today. And that is Dataraya Ramchandra Kaprikar, a Indian Same mathematician. Yeah, an Indian mathematician who lived from 1905 to 1986, who discovered several results in number theory, including a class of numbers and a constant named after him. But this only happened after... Um, uh, a math author, Martin Gardner, who uh, is the author responsible for annotated Alice in Wonderland, I believe, wrote a column in Scientific American. And then all these things got named after him. And so how does this uh, become our random? Well, 99 when squared equals 9801. And 98 plus 01 equals 99. And that is the class of numbers that he discovered. You take a number, you square it, you <laughs> split it in half, and then you plus those things together, and it you needs end to up come with the original the, number. Yeah, it ends up with the original number. I'm sure that's used in some magic tricks. I've, you know, you get these mathematical magic tricks. Yes, and that I'm sort sure of stuff. there's something like that yeah. in that. And, and you find it might actually have some application somewhere in cryptography or breaking cryptography or, or quite possibly. Yes. Well, these things randomly get used for, for things that you would never expect them to be used. Indeed, for. that was an excellent random. Thank you, Mixer. <laughs> Mind-blowingly cool stuff around numbers. Check out his Wikipedia page, which is obviously the arbiter of all truth and knowledge. Uh, what's coming up? Um, I know there's the Celluidroid sci-fi anime fantasy event, apparently. At a very unfortunately named theatre, which I'm not too sure I want to say on, on yes. the yes. Yeah, yeah, I'm not going to say uh, I said exactly the same thing. Uh, uh, a it's friend. in Cape Town. <laughs> it's in Cape Town, I thought it was. 68 Orange Street. <laughs> yes. Go look it up. Celluidroid.net. We'll paste it in the RSC so everybody else can check out where it is. And then going on right now, in a, a keynote going on right now is Google I.O. Mm -hmm. You can tune into that. And that'll be going on today, tomorrow... And the day after that, whichever day that yeah. will be. So if you're watching so the live stream, this is relevant to you. If you're not watching the live stream, you've probably missed it and you should just read the coverage. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So Google I.O. is bound to be awesome. They've already announced a Nexus tablet. They've already uh, announced confirmed a Jelly bunch Bean, of stuff. A bunch of improvements to Google Apps. Yep. It, it's promising to be, to be very interesting. Mm. So with that, um, Sean, all right, you've, you've told us where you're from, but where can people find you online? Uh, well, dubri.c.za. That's D-W Berry. Uh, is my blog, which I don't update ever, except <laughs> when I want to cause trouble. <laughs> and then um, my Twitter handle is Sean, S-H-A-U-N. That uh, was lucky. Yeah, it was recently point out, pointed out to me that I wasn't the first person on Twitter. So I'm very sad about that. It's a very, very tragic. First tragi South African on Twitter. First South African on Twitter, yeah. It's a very tragic day for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm hoping I'm second, but it's all unconfirmed. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and Sean at Dubery.co.za. Cool. All right, so before we get into what you're in trouble for, um, let's, let's talk about something to, to get the blood going a little bit. <laughs> Unfixable computers are leading humanity down a perilous path. Gareth, you put this in the show notes. What's yes, going on? indeed. Uh, well, as we know, the new MacBook Pros launched uh, last week, two weeks ago. It's all kind of a blur With right Retina. Now. The, exactly, the Retina mm. Display MacBook Pro. So not the, not the other 15-inch MacBook Pro, the, the normal one with a slight spec bump, the one with a Retina Display. Oh. And what they've done is to be able to fit everything in there and bump up all the things. And they've made it the very specs, thinner. They've made it thinner. Um, they've excluded some things, but they've made things, they've compressed things so much that even the iFixit guys are looking at it and going, this is not fixable by a regular human being, which mm. you know, to the iFix, for, for the iFixit guys to say that is... Well, they soldered the RAM onto the motherboard. Exactly. Yeah. You know, they, they do that sort of thing. And the guys weren't, you know, they're not all that impressed because, well, it's iFixit. They want you to be able to fix your machine. It's your machine that you bought. Now, if you want to do, if you want to fix anything, if, if you want to add anything, you have to take it into an Apple store. If you want to add some RAM, you, have to, you, you can't. I new, mean, new motherboard. Yeah, exactly. Which is you need the cost a whole new machine, motherboard. Yeah. Um, and and that's actually kind of ridiculous. Um, and they also showed that the uh, the the display is a sealed unit. Yes. So if you mm. need to re replace and anything in the display with the antennas, with you anything, you have to replace the whole thing. Yes. No, um, going this, why do they say this is bad? Yeah. So what, what's well, this whole perilous humanity? If, if, if others, yeah. if others start cheaper, doing this, if others this. started doing this sort of thing, you essentially have a computer that you can't. 
Um, fix yourself. You can't fix easily. You have to take it into a store. So you're relying on someone else to be able to fix it. Um, if, if, if it's even possible. But at the end of the day, you're really just getting uh, a, a temporary you know, something that you're going to be throwing away in yeah. a year or two. For, uh, well, from, from my perspective, I've kept old laptops alive exactly. for many, many yeah. years just by upgrades, you know, a new solid state hard drive, bump up the RAM. I mean, this thing, it cost me three, three and a half grand. Hmm. Bump it up eight gigs of RAM, Core i5 processor, solid state hard drive, yeah. and you're okay. Yeah. And uh, now that, that whole uh, option uh, is uh, just uh, closing down. This, uh, even late, let's say later on your screen dies, you can refurbish the server. Exactly. And when they talk about this, they say a lot of the PCs from the first world countries and stuff get exported to Africa and stuff yeah. and get reused there um, and go to schools and all the rest of it. And, and with these new devices, when they die now, because old laptops could get repaired, uh, servers could get repaired. Mm. Now they can't. So they pretty much you've de decreased the entire lifetime, which basically is very ungreen. Um, yeah. And they talk also about all the materials and special minerals and metals that go in that, that is causing instability in this world, that now pretty much you, you're throwing these away and you, you can't re-harvest them that easily from the computers. And the lifetime of the computers decreased. And they talk about, was it something like a, a one billion or oh, several million of these phones that come through every time um, that, you know, normally, like I know with my phones, at some point they, they get donated to somebody else and they use it. But now because they're becoming harder and harder to repair, after three years, they get thrown away. So you, you don't have yeah. this continual reuse. But it's an interesting topic they're talking about. Mm, mm, yeah, it is. All right. So and, uh, and into the, the real reason we invited Sean onto the show today is that he published a blog post um, that was none too complimentary of uh, NetDynamics, a, a company that provides uh, audio streaming services to radio stations such as Balls Visual Radio, uh, Two Oceans Live, and a host of others. Um, uh, two, two Oceans Vibe. My bad. Um, <laughs> Uh, and, uh, yeah, so, so Sean, I think before we begin, I don't think everybody's necessarily up to speed on the issue. Mm -hmm. So summarize for us um, what the problem is here. Okay, so basically there's a couple of these online radio stations that are reporting these uh, amazing stats. I mean, it looks like radio sta streaming radio stations in South Africa are the business. Pumping, yeah. It's the thing, thing you've got to get into. These, these guys are reporting massive follow followers, uh, listeners, listenership, etc., and what numbers I, are we talking? I, we're talking in the region of like 50,000 current listeners. They, there's talk of uh, certain, uh, Two Oceans Vibe, for instance, uh, claim to be beating KFM when they do their whole uh, marketing and market share analysis. Um, I can't remember. KFM, the, the a broadcast two, radio station. A broadcast radio okay. station. So, so, so this is a, so a they streaming say, radio station competing with a broadcast radio station. They say they're beating out the broadcast radio stations. And, uh, well, I've got a little startup that I'm involved with uh, called Interwebs Radio, which is a little side cool. project. We, we've chatted about it before. It's yes, a cool yes. Project. Yeah. last week I actually saw that show. Um, and so, obviously, I've got a small interest in what's going on here. Uh, so I thought, well, that's fantastic. We, we'll get our listeners as well eventually once we get our content going. Um, but then I started investigating this whole thing, and, and all of a sudden the numbers didn't really seem to add up. So basically, in summary what is being advertised by these radio stations as their listenership doesn't seem to be the case from a technical perspective. Okay. Um, so I, I think just, just before we proceed, we, we need to talk about um, your vested interest a little bit. So mm -hmm. um, just before people fall into a logical, into a logical fallacy yeah. here, um, uh, having a vested interest does not diminish the technical argument necessarily, right? So, but I know yeah. people are... Uh, you know, it's, like, it's like a standard political argument. Exactly. So I'm take, There's a lot of people saying I'm a competitor or an, I'm employed by a competitor to net dynamics, that sort of thing. Yes, yes. And the, the whole point of this thing was I, I actually deliberately separated myself from Interwebs Radio. This was not released by Interwebs Radio. There's other people who work on Interwebs Radio who are not involved in my research. I've obviously shared it with them. Um, and so we, we've, you know, done us tried to do a separation, but obviously, yes, I am invested as a technical guy assisting them with the infrastructure that uh, they they use. Mm. Would you have been interested in this at all had you not had a vested interest in the industry? Yes. Okay. The thing is, from what I'm seeing, it looks like there are advertisers or somebody's generating a lot of money uh, around something that doesn't exist. You know, uh, your, your typical dot com boom style yeah, yeah. bubble. And that's the problem. And 
coming from uh, the hacker community and lots of friends in the hacker, com hacker community, one of the, the core things about the, ha uh, the hacker community is the search for truth. And I just want to know the truth, you know. So, yeah. You see something that's not quite adding up and you want to look a bit further and just exactly. understand it. And then you, you go down <coughs> the rabbit hole. And then and you pull out a few stats, and <laughs> more and more odd, and <laughs> it gets more and more odd, and more and more mysterious. Yes. So, so take us through how you did your research. How, um, how did okay. you measure their statistics? How accurate do you think it is? Um, and how did you do it? Okay, so it started off, um, and actually, in my um, my article I published, which is on my blog, dubri.co.za, uh, paint it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually started with a basic analysis. So I started with the social media analysis and just said, okay, you know, in my opinion, there should be some sort of parallel between the, your social media follower and the, the number of listeners you have. And, you know, and so this argument has been torn to shreds, though. I mean, it, I mean, it has been torn to shreds. I know it's not necessarily a valid argument, but you would expect some sort of similarity in listener, listenership to your, your media, uh, your social media platforms. So for instance, Two Oceans Vibe has a Facebook application, which um, is a, a player for their radio station. And according to Facebook themselves, this player has an average of, I think it was 10 monthly users. Now, we, we live in a world where Facebook is a reality. And uh, these are streaming radio stations, so generally the p your listenership is going to be uh, composed of um, more technical uh, or more technically competent, competent people. So what's going to happen there is th they are the people who are going to be on Facebook. They are the people that are going to be on Twitter. I, I understand, for instance, terrestrial radio. You you get your radio out of a box in the corner. That's you know there's no. Uh, it's, it's all in, in the air. There's no interactivity. There's no feedback. But one would expect some sort of parallels. But anyway, it's, it's a bit of a, a stab in the dark. So that, that was one path I went down. And basically, I found out that there were, you know, disparities, let's say. So then I think uh, next I took a look at um, the bandwidth and networking component of it. Now, I'm not the world's best network engineer, but I know the basics of internet and traffic and, and uh, routing and et cetera, et cetera, enough to see that, you know, or enough to find the source and find out what's going on here. So looked at the bandwidth that they were projecting because you've got 60,000 listeners, say, using 24 megabits per second. Multiply that out. You're talking gigabits. I can't do the sums in my head right now, but you're talking massive amounts of data that well, one provider is I know we did the quick calculation, uh, but I use 64 kilobits per second at 50,000 oh, yes, sure. users it uh, comes to th about 3.2 gigabits per second yeah so that that's a lot of traffic <coughs> to be pushing out of what seems to be one server yeah we also added that what we were doing some more sets which because a lot of people only looked at the one radio station so if you actually take they've got other ones also doing 50,000 and a couple doing 20 yes. so let's say you take a hundred thousand which you know it's actually lower than that yes. they're doing that comes out at six point, roughly 6.4 gigabits per second. We also looked at Sinks and Jinx today. Sinks did 2 point something gigabits, and Jinx did 3.8 gigabits uh, per second today. So S their total bandwidth is exceeding both Sinks and Jinx. You see, this is, this is the type of network odd, yeah. information that – this is part of the reason that I published this whole thing is, I, you know, there are, those are the networks. peaks – sorry, the peaks yes. at, at those top, top high nexus. Yes. So okay. the, the peaks at our exchanges don't even reach the capacity <coughs> of what Net Dynamics claims to be broadcasting into this country. So, um, yeah, and, and that's why I published this thing because I need to get – external, you know, mm. input as But well. let's get to the but, hardcore stats. But, I mean, okay, like, yeah. so, 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 so where's we the had smoking this, We had this little suspicion and whatever, and I went through and I checked out the, uh, for obviously, social media bandwidth. Okay, but, you know, there's different ways to deal with those issues, and they're not, they're not smoking guns, as you say. So then I started looking simply at the, the, the player pages, which contain all the links to all the different ways that you can connect to, uh, for instance, to Ocean's Vibe or Balls Radio. And I looked in the source, which is an amazing thing to do when you right-click and view source. Yes. And in there, it's 
simply says stream source equals or whatever, and it gave IP addresses. Oh, well, there were a few DNS entries, but for the majority, it was just IP addresses. 85.25.164.41. Actually, it was 85.25.164.33 three. through to 64. So I see that, and I see that that's, well, obviously, I'm going to take that IP address and p plug it into my browser. Lo and behold, up pops a shoutcast uh, streaming um, st status page. Now, what, the st what that means is uh, that's actually a page that's in part of the software, of the shoutcast yeah. software. It, it comes provided like that. That is, when you, s when you turn on shoutcast, you get that page. You can probably hide it or tamper it with it and whatever and make yeah, it well disappear. Look, I, know with the, no, I don't know shoutcast as well, but I know with Icecast, yes. which is an open source version you of it, can you, you can put password protected and stuff like that if you wanted to. Yeah. But it actually gives fairly accurate, uh, ac accurate stats for the yes. past people so, connecting. So what was happening there is then I connect this and say, for instance, whether it be Balls or Two Oceans Vibe, I connect to this port on that IP address and it says shoutcast server for this radio station. And right there it says listeners. And it would say like, well, okay, for um, to Ocean's Vibe, it would say probably about 40 or something like that. For Balls, it was I'd probably saying around 200. And I was like, but that's not what they said on the interwebs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, and, and, this is, and, and now, and, and I know yeah. that, the, that the, this has been called into question. That the whole thing of concurrent listeners versus hourly listeners versus weekly listeners versus monthly listeners. Yes. So, so let's get this clear. What were what were the stats these guys were advertising? What were the stats that you got? Like, are we talking okay. concurrent? Or are we talking hourly? And how do we marry those? So I just also no. want to add one other thing to this. The um, software, because we also looked a bit further after we read your letter, um, and it said limited to 3,000 listeners. Oh, yes. So there's a limit on the server on, as well. On that shout cost status yeah. page, it actually said that this server can only handle this many listeners, and then it will start kicking people off yeah. or, or rejecting well, connections. It stops, yeah. yeah. Starts, starts, starts rejecting. Yeah, yeah rejecting connections. Yeah. Okay, and, and that seems, I mean, if you say that we peaked at 60,000 concurrent listeners, but your shoutcast server maxes out at 3,000, then that's just well, not possible, you know right? what's going on. Unless you've got another server. Unless you've got another server. Look, I just want to add the, w the one thing that could be going on here, but all, all the evidence I've seen, this is not occurring. Mm -hmm. So just, I'm just covering this as well, is that they're doing some load balancing. Yes, there is the possibility so of a load balancing. several servers behind one single IP. I've IP any cost, basically. Yeah, I've actually be, uh, kept <coughs> particularly quiet about this because... I don't think that Net Dynamics have had the technical competence to um, well, come up with this. One thing, in I'll, my I'll, opinion, I'll, I'll, look, and um, from what I've observed, mm. a when I keep on hitting it, you always get the same page. That mm. could be just being because they're doing um, making it sticky. Very good. Yeah. Uh, but the other thing is, everybody else hitting it from lots of different occasions are always hitting the mm. same page with the same stats. And I also tried from yeah. Germany and from the US. You would expect some Somewhere difference, it change, and it was yeah. always the same. So yeah. So I just wanted to add this. That this yeah. is, a, is, it an is a, it, yes, it is but definitely from a technical all, all possibility. The tests we've done, this is unlikely. Unlikely, yes. Mm, mm. Yeah. All right. So um, uh, back to the the previous question, which was um, <clears throat> the the whole uh, concurrent versus hourly versus monthly. Oh, yes. So so what what was what was advertised and what did you find? Bottom line. It. Okay. Bottom line. Stations such as Balls and Two Oceans Vibe were claiming. Anywhere in the region of fifty to sixty thousand concurrent listeners, that's there. I've referenced it actually in the article I wrote. Bottom line: every time I've connected to their shoutcast servers, which are providing the stream, maximum for balls on launch day was eleven hundred listeners. I watched it. Mm -hmm. Their average now, or their their peak lately over the past say two to three, well two to three weeks, is 300 listeners. To Ocean's Vibe, peak 50 concurrent listeners. That's it. That's where it hits at the middle of the day. I've graphed it out with using RRD tool, and that's where it gets to. Mm. Now, now um, the, the, the first sort of backlash to your blog post was an interview on Balls Radio, I oh, think. Yes. <laughs> when Darren Scott pulled you on. There's a YouTube video for that somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, you can just hit, hit YouTube and Balls Radio yeah. and well, uh, yeah. Sean... 
Sean's name. It bounces Uberi. up and down, though, that YouTube video. You've got to be careful. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> apparently some folks, sometimes. some folks have ripped it and more Streisand effect <laughs> goes down again. Um, but um, it, t- towards the end of that mm. interview, Darren Scott seemed to be cry-facing a little bit about – you know, you're saying that they don't have any listeners and, yeah. and so on. Is, is that what you're saying? Is, is that that nobody is interested in these radio stations? That no. nobody's listening to them? You see, the thing is, and this comes back to the, the previous thing where I've got a vested inter- in, interest in this industry. I don't want there to be no listeners. I'm just frustrated that there's no bandwidth and bandwidth is too expensive for there to be listeners. But we're scaling up. We're one, starting. One thing I just want to also add, you, you don't want to have it so that people ache misclaiming stats oh, yes. um, create a false impression so other people who are maybe doing very well be, are invisible com- and comparative to this secondly if somebody is doing that and it comes out it can destroy the industry exactly. so you'd rather catch it early stop it and say let's let's follow a clear standard this is how the reporting should be done if your stats are like that great Fantastic, but we yes. want we want honest stuff out there because in actual mm. fact being honest can actually help the industry grow far better in my opinion. Exactly. Well, a- and uh, you can see what the problems one are. One of my arguments is that because of the technical nature of streaming radio, it's far more measurable than some random listener diary. Yes. You know, it it's really can be measured to a far greater extent than anything um, that's broadcast through the air. Mm. Short of, say, a stream, um, maybe we shouldn't go there, but short of a stream going to... Uh, a place like you know Mr. Price or whatever, and then putting it on their yeah, speakers. But that's then another you need great. On foot, then you need on foot yes, research to yes. measure. But that's another great um, possibility for these radio stations that you can stream a radio station to your small shopping center with five shops, and it's viable. And you you can take different feeds from wherever and cut through them. And so th- the the potential for this this market is great. But the problem is the little startup when in a year's time bandwidth becomes really cheap. Hopefully. Touch wood. <laughs> Cheaper. <laughs> um, then all of a sudden, the little startup's going to say, well, yeah, man, let's go do this radio thing. And they're going to walk in there, and they're going to walk to an advertiser and say, you know what? We got 200 listeners, man. That's good. And the, lis- the advertiser's going to say, why would I ever advertise with you? The other guy's reporting 50,000 listeners. Mm. Go away. So, so have advertisers turned down interwebs radio? Uh, we have, from Interweb's radio perspective, we're not ready for advertisers yet. Okay. We, we still run devious uh, cigarette advertising <laughs> <laughs> from the 80s, you know, throwbacks to the 80s and yes, that yes, sort of yeah. stuff. Yeah, it's sort so of like a nod to, to, the, to, the, to the bad old days <laughs> of old, 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 old yeah. stations yeah. and stuff like that. So we, we haven't got any of that well, yet. Well, it's crinkle cut chips ads. They're actually exactly. quite entertaining. No. It, it reminds me of, of uh, Demolition Man. Uh, you know the when when they talk about the oldie stations and all they mm, play is yes, radio jingles. Yeah, jingles, exactly. Exactly, it's kind of <laughs> like that. I yeah. just also want to just go over some of the responses that they came back with. Sure. For, for one one mm. of the things is they said they're actually only counting sessions. Yes, that would came. Um, that's what came out this morning. I think. Yeah. yeah, and they so give the, and they give the raw stats, right? Uh, and what they, what they mean by sessions like that, and sometimes, so if you connect multiple times and your session is still active, but you've so let's say you 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 change an IP. So quite often the servers will maintain that old session waiting t- for you to get contact mm. on the old IP and mm-hmm. you've made a new connection. At that point, you've been counted as two people. Mm, uh, now, I've seen, even seen with our streaming and our stats like that, that does occur. Mm-hmm. There's normally, call it a 30 second, it depends on the server how long that takes, but that can bump your numbers out. But from all my experience, that's normally at worst case for a very brief period, 20%. Um, mm-hmm. In their case, so e- even taking that into consideration that the stats might be not not at quite as high as, as they, they've claimed. Um, mm. It's still far higher than sounds Yeah, there's, there's r- quite a big discrepancy between the two figures, you should say. And my big thing with all this stuff is, at some point, the easiest way to discredit this or prove it wrong is to provide the logs. Or, or prov- just say, look, this isn't mm. here. We've got these people in. They're looking at our logs. Yeah. We've, you know... I, 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 I don't mm. want to talk too much about this, yeah. but, but uh, uh, the, the thing the is, thing, uh, I, I yeah. came in a very, uh, I, I came in aggressively because I didn't think anyone would listen if I didn't come in aggressively. So yes, there is quite a lot of aggression, but I think I did keep it fair. But that's up for discussion. Uh, the the point is, uh, I had the facts that were available to me. The facts did not co- correlate whatsoever with the facts that were being published by these stations. I stuck my stake in the ground. I put my reputation on the line. My, and I, sa- I deliberately said, in my professional and personal opinion, I deliberately wrote that. 
to say, this is me putting my stake in the ground. Come prove me wrong. Yeah. And they could have... They could have turned around and thrown these stats, thrown their stats, w- with sufficient evidence right back at me and completely Destroyed obliterated me. Yeah. They could have taken Which, me down. You know, part part of it's not not to say they're obliterated, but would be great because it would show how well these sites are actually doing in this country, which mm. would be a good thing. Mm. Um, exactly. I, I, I do want to point out that um, in the article we did for my broadband on this, we actually received um, information uh, from, uh, I think we actually write this, we, we've got this down, um, the, the stats net dynamics provided to balls, right? And this is a screen cap on my broadband of what they say there. And the, the same stuff that they're saying is session stats now, there's a column heading here that says total, total listeners. listeners, right? So um, th- th- they do need to explain the, the disparity and, and what exactly, you know, was said to whom when. Yeah. Um, uh, because, yeah, uh, like it just, it just still doesn't add up despite the toing and froing between Sean and Net Dynamics. Uh, which has now resulted in a legal threat, which uh, uh, we'll yes, hopefully get yeah. to cover in just a second. <laughs> um, well, but look, uh, th- th- it's still like n- there's no there's no evidence really to contradict what w- Sean is saying. One thing I just mm. also want to add to, with session stats like that, if you average your, your active sessions over an hour, what the average is should actually be your listeners. Because you, you'll have connections. Well, except for duplicates, take, right? Yeah, you know, but mm. it takes a while to die, but it does die. So let's say it lasts five minutes. Over an hour, hour, that will get averaged out. Yes. Um, so you've got the other 55 minutes of correct stats for that person. So it might inflate it slightly, but your 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 average over the hour, if you're doing proper averaging, you you know chasing every minute or something like that, mm-hmm. you know it should give you a much more accurate stats. So there are ways of improving it mm-hmm. from mm-hmm. that. Yeah, um, definitely. I, I do want to. I do want to get into what could be considered because Tim, you've run Let's Talk Network for a good while now, mm. so you've got some experience in this regard as well. What is good listenership statistics? Should we be aiming for thousands and tens of thousands of listeners as indie <coughs> or even mainstream radio streaming radio stations in South Africa? Look, just looking at their stats and stuff like that. So, like, I, I know we we've been improving so like we're getting about live listeners our, our youtube and stuff is far better and that's where we get most of our stuff but we we average about 10 to 18 people live now on our mm, show our core listenership. Core listenership you guys rock by the way very very cool um now i know other ones are, are doing better than that so i'm saying if you're getting between 200 and 300 or above 300 you're doing really well yes. so if you're getting in like this country, country, radios um what they've been getting what these shot cost stats yes. are saying it's really good for south africa i yeah. would say and this is also in the middle of the day where people would work so it's yes. not while they're sitting. So I think, you know, 300 to me, I see that. I'm going, these guys are doing well for a live station, 300. And this is where I'm saying if this, the other stats are wrong, it's actually deflating how well they're doing or another site that is also doing 300 would be doing. Um, mm-hmm. I know I'm not going to go into this. Another site you've come that's got 450 to 500. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, and to me, that's like, net dynamics wow, clients. in this country, that's scarily good. Um, and it's it's niche. It's niche radio stations. Yeah. For, for instance, the ball, balls. They they they're a sports radio station. The the music they play is average. Mm. I would say. Mm. But um, they're a sports radio station. They bring on fantastic sports celebrities. If if you're into sports, that's the radio station for you. And do well with your 300 and grow that. That's all. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, one thing I do want to maybe mention about streaming radio is unlike broadcast radio, you don't spin a tuner knob and end up somewhere or, you know, f- you know, flick the switch until something interesting comes on. You have to find them and click on them mm-hmm. and actively listen to them. You don't, you don't necessarily stumble upon them unless maybe you download an app like tune in radio yeah. and you're looking for something to yeah. listen to. And, but that's also not, th- th- it's not the same as spinning the dial there. Um, you're still going to be categorized and you're going to go, I want to listen to this category of thing. And or unless you search for a name. Also, it's not somebody stuck in a car waiting to pass time. It's somebody who's I've actively chosen to go out and listen to this, and mm. I've. It's normally I'm investing that, my time and my yeah. bandwith in, so in this operation. To me, that's a user that's far more engaged and, and far more exactly. interesting yes. to advertise yes. and stuff like that. So yeah, I just wanted to add one other thing. There are, by the way, uh, I know I logged in today. They are changing some of the things on the website. Yes. Um, well, one of the rebuttals. Maybe we should go mm. there. One okay. of the rebuttals. Well, the, f- the was first that rebuttal. Yeah, wasn't that was that they don't just 
uh, they, they don't just oh, okay. use the Shoutcast server, right? Mm -hmm. Or do you want to do you want to tackle the other? What was the well, other rebuttal? Well, the very first rebuttal was obviously the legal papers. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll yeah, we'll cover that in, oh, okay, because okay. I think that I that's a whole different can okay, of worms, cool. okay, an cool. interesting can of worms. Yes, yes. Um, so um, they say that the Shoutcast server is actually by far. Um, where the least amount of their traffic mm -hmm. uh, goes, that in fact the most of their traffic, uh, if I if I read was the the most recent their press release from this morning, mm -hmm. um, and I'm just going to go to that now just to make sure that I'm quoting it correctly. But um, they, from what I've read, they said that the majority of the traffic goes through a flash media server, which is by mm -hmm. the way what you if you're watching us now, that's where you're getting your stuff yep. from, a flash okay. media server. Cool. Um, so. Um, I mean, how would you respond to that? Uh, because you focus completely on the shoutcast stuff. Well, I looked at every single streaming link on a whole bunch of their uh, radio station listening link pages. And every single Flash interface, Windows Media Player, Real Player, iTunes, Winamp, everything pointed at the shoutcast servers. There was nothing pointing anywhere else. View source on the Flash, view it everywhere. Nothing, nothing, nothing pointed anywhere except at these shoutcast servers, which I was able to see the status pages of. Yeah. Mm. And so, but now, however, I have done some testing, and that seems to not be the case. Is that yeah. what you wanted to bring well, up? Well, as I said, yeah. I went to look at the sites today just in preparation for tonight. Mm -hmm. um, all the links, except for one, are still pointing to shoutcast server, but they do now have the, the Flash player, which now points at a, a, me, a Flash media server um, or a Flash server um, mm -hmm. so it's using the rtmp protocol to to do that yes um Firewall it's still only issues. one and that's the one that says for linux and for windows there is still a separate windows player which if i was on windows is the one that i'm more likely to click on mm -hmm. so it's still most of the other viewers and mac there's a, there's another link so and yeah, that's the one i actually that was the first one i tested because yeah. and for mac. android for android iphone blackberry all of them point still at the shark cost except for this one link mm -hmm. so admittedly yes you can't see the stats for that link it's yeah. Looking at it, it's unlikely that most people would be using that single link. Okay. All the other links still point at one single shark list. But, so, but you said that that, yeah. that was not pointing at 217. whatever I'm seeing today. No, no. I, I mean, I'm hardly even aware of this. I've been running around and checking emails and doing other crazy stuff. Uh, doing interviews. Doing interviews, that sort of thing. And I simply be, uh, I became aware uh, later this afternoon. Um, I went on to... <laughs> While I was waiting for that uh, interview that Two Oceans Vibe did with Net Dynamics, with the Net Dynamics guy at, ho at half past five, except it was yeah. at five. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I actually, I actually missed the interview because I tuned in yeah. at half past there's, five. There's actually, it's on SoundCloud. If you want to go listen to it, on uh, cool. I saw the Twitter comments and they were not flattering. But yeah, I yeah. mean, one should listen to it for yourself mm. and make up your own mind. Yeah. So um, while I was waiting for that, I was actually looking around on the website, and you know. Just collecting a little bit more evidence, making sure I'm covering my bases, all this sort of stuff, in case it goes anywhere further. And all of a sudden, I see a flash player that I haven't seen before. And then I refresh the page, and then it doesn't even refresh the page. And then I refresh the page, and now it pushes me to a, pl a player 2.html. So literally, while I was on the server, I think they were busy changing it. So now we've got a, a, a Flash media server that um, I'm not very familiar with the Flash media server side of things, so it's obviously pointing somewhere else. And uh, so what I did is, well, hey, wait a minute. Maybe, maybe I'm going crazy. Maybe it was always there. You know, maybe I'm just not thinking properly, whatever. It's a long day, etc. So I decided there's only one way to find out, Google Cache. Went to Google Cache, did a search for that page and the links on that page, and lo and behold, the Flash player has only come live in the past couple of days. Basically, I can probably safely assume that since I released my document, they've now switched on their Flash media server, which Look, smacks of <laughs> something I, I, interesting. I must say, even with Flash media server, they use Apache-style logs. Um, mm. They uh, can provide those logs for people. And you'll absolutely. see when they start it. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And and I guess that's the that's the bottom line. I mean, the the only way any of us are going to be sure, and the only way uh, people are going to believe radio stats again after this whole issue is if there are audited statistics available. Yes. Um, and the, the DMMA 
have already come online mm. uh, with us, jumped on the bandwagon very quickly. I uh, think it was out last night already. Yeah, which yeah. which is cool. Uh, not saying anything mean about the DMMA. Mm. I am a member. <laughs> don't kill me. Well, my broadband's a member. <laughs> yeah. Don't kill me um, or anything. Um, but, uh, I mean, it is also good to see people reacting quickly yes. in situations yes. like this. Um, so so take, me, take me through that. If... Um, if uh, would you say that, you know, despite uh, lawsuits, uh, you get it, having to cough up a whole lot of money, if out of this comes audited statistics for internet streaming radio, would you have succeeded? I believe I will have succeeded greatly. I think that's, that's a massive thing to change. It's a whole industry and it needs it. So the I'll thing I like about that, that is at that point you will be definitely comparing apples with apples. Yes. It will be a common measure. So if, if it's you're doing the session method, then they all will be measured with the session method. Yeah. Um, so it will just be all radios will be measured on equal ground, which is always great. Mm. Exactly. Well, except that it, that'll differ by technology, won't it? Because you were mentioning uh, just now that Shoutcast and Icecast are maybe a little better than Flash, a media server, which tends to drop connections or a um, misunderstanding. Yeah, it, it is. So I've seen this being worse on us. Actually, more Red, Red 5 was a bit worse at this. Um, so between different servers there is. But in that, there would be a ways of counting for that and measuring for that. Sure. Especially if you're looking, if you're looking, if you start using the raw logs, uh, you quite quickly see that these things die off after a couple of while, and you can you can write things to basically just process the data. But it was still your trend would still be correct. So yes. if you, if you're getting fifty thousand, so maybe five percent of that is maybe questionable. That's still forty five thousand. Mm -hmm. You know, at that point, th that's more. You know, it's they want the ballpark figures, not I need to know you have. 5,542 people. If you, if you get close to 5,000, that's still showing that you're doing mm. well. Mm -hmm. um, and they will get that level out of these yeah. stats. And just just yeah. to clarify quickly for our listeners, who's the DMMA? What do they do? Uh, the DMMA is, I don't know what the... the, the uh, I believe it's the decided. Digital Media, Media and Marketing, Marketing Association, Association yeah. of South Africa. And um, they are a body that you basically, you have to belong to if you want to get advertising on your site. Uh, <laughs> to, to put it bluntly, mm. um, so and that's not a bad thing mm. because um, DMMA members um, uh, get measured through a company called Effective Measure. Now used to be Nielsen, it's now Effective Measure, mm -hmm. and um, those stats can be if if you're in the advertising industry or in the media industry, you have access to those stats. They're not necessarily publicly available. Um, I don't want to get into too much into the politics of it all, but the bottom line is the people who who want access and need access to those stats for their daily jobs they can generally get it. So if you're an advertising professional and you go, I want to target this demographic, you go to the effective measure page, clickety, clickety, click, um, you, you look at what you want for and it comes back with a list of sites. And to, to uh, more importantly, those are audited. Those are audited. Effective measure is a company like Nielsen's which releases audited statistics. So you run their code, their tracking code on your website for the people on my broadband who have been complaining about the irritating flash pop-ups and stuff. Um, we are trying, I mean, obviously when your complaints come back, we do pass those on to them and, and we try to address those issues, but that comes through their code, right? And so for you to fill in surveys and things, which helps um, narrow down the demographics of a site mm. so that you know, so that um, people in the industry can target stuff. Yeah. Um, and and that's a good thing. Audited yeah. statistics yes. are a good thing. Um, so uh, and so that's in essence what the DMMA does for the online, uh, for the online text-based side of things. So streaming radio is, is different. Is a different uh, yeah. You'd have to use a them. different yeah. way. The different to medium, do it. Yeah. but it can be done, right? Yeah. I think I, th I think they said actually they're. Planning on having, I think, something tomorrow. I don't yeah, know if I'll be able to attend. About some of the There's going to be a webinar, they call yeah, it, yes. Yeah, yeah uh, from three to four, which is very cool. Um, and people can give their inputs on how this should be done. Um, exactly. So if you want to have a say in how this industry is measured, now's the time. Yeah. Cool. The, the trick now is I've got to figure out <laughs> where I am between three and four tomorrow. But I'm sure I'll try and be a part of that as well because there's, there's obviously a lot to discuss. You know, you get the different streaming formats, different server types, flash media servers. There's a lot of jargon throwing around. So they've got a, a lot of work to do to get this right. Mm. But it can be, done. Somewhere. can be done. And it can be done. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um, cool. So um, one last qu question. Just I've, I've, also, I've, I've been also got waiting for it for a bit. Cool, yeah. um, some of the guys just want to know, did you, have you heard anything more from the lawyers? Is it, or have you just received the one letter? No, I've just received the one letter. Um, yeah. in, in which they, they threatened you, basically. In, in which, uh, uh, basically, I... Uh, I would refer to it as a takedown notice. 
in that it's something that people send to you and they say, okay, take the shit down or we're going to come at you. Mm -hmm. Okay. And come at you? They were quite specific in how they were oh, going to come at you, Yeah, right? they were very specifically going to uh, take me to high court and, yeah. and get a injunction injunction to, which to make me remove the yeah. items from and the web. And then they were going to basically in that get a court order that you have to cover their legal costs. And oh, sue yes, you for yes. damages. Yeah, so I'm and, just going over. Oh, yeah, and then there and, was and the further suing for damages, yeah. all of that. Actually, I think I still have it open. Cool. It, it was a bit tricky. I, I read it very quickly. Um, cool. Sorry, there was just a question about RSC that no, I've no, been it's waiting an, for the right it, time. It's an important question, and, mm. and it is something that, that I wanted to cover. So, yeah. so we are talking about an interesting space. So I, I'm sorry mm. we're spending so much time on it, but this yeah. you were warned this was what the show was going to be about tonight. So <laughs> we might skip over all the other topics <laughs> yes. we had lined we up really the agenda, this. <laughs> except Mass Effect 3. We have to talk about that. Um, yeah, yeah. Jan has to talk about <laughs> Mass Effect 3. <laughs> um, and... Uh, and so you're you're an, an IT professional by day. Yes. Um, you you're you're uh, involved with internet interwebs radio on the side. Mm -hmm. You're a, you're a casual blogger by night. Uh, <laughs> Very and, casual. And, and, yeah. <laughs> um, and so what what we're talking about here is is actually quite interesting. They're, they're talking about uh, defamation mm -hmm. um, of of someone voicing an opinion mm -hmm. on their blog. Um, granted, uh, you did use the words. You, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. You did use the words lies and fabricated. Fabricate and uh, utter fabrications, lies even. I think. <laughs> yes, yes. All yes. right. So, so those mm. are strong statements are in, strong in the statements. legal world. In the yeah. legal world. So I, I did have reservations about using them. I asked a buddy and they said, ah, just go with it. Um, and I, I'm, it's fair. You know, I, I will accept responsibility for saying that. I acknowledge that I did say that. I know they're not the nicest words. But I've uh, also, at the same time, have difficulty finding a word, a synonym for lie that doesn't say lie. Sure, sure. <laughs> you know, I really believed that these stats were lies. I don't you okay. know, call so me a straight talker, perhaps. Maybe a bit too straight. Yeah, but, but, but what if what if uh, Net Dynamics had made a mistake and yeah, they, and they uh, didn't uh, lie outright? You see, the, there is there is a whole ongoing debate, and you can include um, journalistic integrity. Like, if bloggers are journalists, mm -hmm. they got to play by the rules. So, yeah, I am a little bit caught out there. Yes, perhaps I should have approached Net Dynamics for comment. I didn't, um, which is probably reckless. Um, but where, do you, where would you draw the line now? now this, is, this is where the debate gets interesting yeah. and where perhaps we should get a media professional or a lawyer on the show yeah. if they have time. Uh, lawyers don't have time. <laughs> um, but um, we, uh, for those of you who don't know, my broadband is a forum as well. And people come on forums and say nasty things. Yeah, it, and it's the internet. Yeah, <laughs> and, and people yeah. people go on go on commenting systems with their Facebook logins with their real names attached to it and say racist things to people. Yeah. Um. So say mean and mean spirited things. Mm. So now, where do you draw the line uh, in terms of defamation and and uh, freedom of yeah. speech? There. So if if I hadn't become styled as a blogger, if I'd posted this on my Facebook page, what would that mean? Well, yeah, but the, yeah. The, you're supposed to do it as a professional. So um, mm -hmm. it, it is, uh, if this does go to court at least, to, to me it will be interesting um, yeah. to see where the, where the line does get yeah. drawn. Because yeah. as, as somebody, as a journalist, um, I, I'm learning daily <laughs> yeah. where, you know, what our responsibilities are and, and that sort of thing. And, and maybe it does need to go to that level where it can actually set some sort of precedent because I don't think there are any precedents in this country for, for that sort of legal situation. Yeah. But uh, I'd like not to be that person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, it would suck to, to be the benchmark. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, but, but just, to, just to get your feeling there, I mean, mm. uh, what, do you think, what do you think would be fair on your part if it is established that Net Dynamics was not lying? I'll absolutely remove any defamatory statements and uh, okay, well, if uh, initially, if if it will clear the air, I will remove anything that they call defamatory, as in words like lies, utter fabrication, and that sort of thing. I'm quite happy to do that. Um, in retrospect, or cross them out and just say I wrote something nasty here. I don't even want to remove it because I, I like to stick by what I've said. Mm. Um, however, if if they vindicate themselves and they show that they've got the stats and all of that, I will have to public. Uh, Public apology, resign from IT. <laughs> wow. <laughs> or, you know, but I, I'm going to take a serious knock. Yeah. And I will have to, and I will have to do it publicly, plain yeah. and simple. You know, uh, 
responsibility. And th that's the reason why I put my name, my telephone number, my Twitter handle, my everything on the report that I wrote, because I'm going to be accountable, come hello I water. And I'm not trying to hide, because it would have been very easy to just pop it up anonymously on a forum. Hey guys, look what I found, or anything like that. It, it would have been very easy to hide and say, this is what the stats look like. But then there's no gravity lended yes. to what I'm saying. And there's no, no extra. It doesn't opinion. carry as much. It doesn't carry any weight, yeah. Yeah, or as much weight, yeah. Mm. Mm. yeah. So if I'm found wrong, yes, it'll have to be a complete reversal of my claims, and I'll have to completely remove that and hope like hell I don't get countersued or something like that. Mm. Mm. Um, so uh, where, do you think, where do you think the truth in this lies today? Is it somewhere in between what you said and what Debt Dynamics said, or is there still no basis for you to think that you're in the wrong? I... I have no basis to think I'm in the wrong. I believe that my figures might be out by an order of 10%, if that. I think what I'm seeing is very accurate. I don't think they have any more listeners than that. I'm, I'm pretty, pretty convinced. Okay. Yeah. And, and just to wrap that up again, um, we're not saying that in streaming internet radio stations in South Africa have no listenership. All right, so if, <laughs> if you're only watching this part of the video, <laughs> right, a listenership of 200 concurrent users. They've, that's a very valuable listenership. Is good. A, li a listenership of, of a concurrent users of 40 users, would you, would you rate that as pretty yes. good? Yes, it's, it's a start. Yeah. You, we've got to start somewhere. Remember. Are you willing to say how many concurrent listeners Interwebs Radio has at any given time? Yes, I'll throw it out there. We, we, max out, we maxed out yesterday at 17. We run between 10 and 15 listeners during yeah. the day. Personally, I, I think that's not bad for something that's just It's started. a start. We'll get there. Uh, I mean, we, we haven't got all our live shows sorted out. We, d we do streaming events where we have little spikes, you know, outside yeah, from yeah. Uh, park acoustics and various other things. So we're getting there slowly. We're taking the long growth path. We haven't got any advertisers yet, as I said earlier, but we'll get there. So, yeah, that's all good. Okay. Um, I don't think there's been any other questions from IRC. I haven't been watching Twitter uh, to be completely I've been, honest. So I've been a bit quiet and that's because I've been watching the RSC. I haven't mm. seen anything specifically. Okay. We, I think we've answered all the questions. That all right. So if there, if there are, are any, any more questions, ask now quickly. We, and, mm. you know, do ask. I know the stream is a little bit behind. Um, I will, we, we can go back and ask more questions and mm -hmm. then we'll cobble together. Sorry, the person who's editing this will cobble it together <laughs> later. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> cool. Uh, just make, make Gerrit do it. Hell, make me Thanks. do it. You yeah. do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be happy okay. to. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, so I think, I think I'm asked out uh, as well, uh, I'm sure I asked something and, and uh, I didn't necessarily Look, get the answer I want, uh, but I'm I can't sure, remember sure right now. There's more things coming here. Mm. Uh, somebody did mention something else that I just was going to find, which I found a bit interesting, um, related, which is, I know your interview, well, the thing where Darren Scott got hold of you, mm -hmm, they yes. said they had an independent person there in set, uh, verifying the, the listenership. Mm. My question was, how were they verifying it? Um, yeah, if I they, haven't they didn't anything. have access to the to the stats either and and they were in studio yeah. how, how was that and I think what, what's interesting about this particular thing and why uh, you know the, the Twitter verses all over it and the blogosphere mm, mm. sorry for using those terms <laughs> you can all tomorrow um, the is, is that this is a fairly technical issue mm. and the yeah. people involved don't necessarily have the technical skills to understand mm. what's going on when we talk about a shoutcast server versus a, a flash media server uh, even my knowledge of these things uh, is is surface level stuff, but enough to know you know uh, uh, the base yeah, to, 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 to know smoke when I see it. Yeah. Um, the, the nice thing is that there's been so many people who've actually come up in support and looked, of me, yeah. and there's people who are researching this further, which is exactly what I wanted. Because if I was wrong, they 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 come to me and they say, "Dude, I mean the my broadband forums. That is the place where you will get taken apart if you know quite nicely if Not if you're nicely. wrong. Those or, guys or, are mean, or, or, or very <laughs> in a very mean fashion. Mm. I don't want to call your listeners mean. Yeah. But <laughs> no, 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 not all. Not all be listeners nice are to my me, guys. Be nice, um, and not all my broadband formats are listeners. But, but but they call a spade a spade. This yeah. is the thing. These guys are the the cream of South Africa's technical people, as far as I'm concerned, and they call a spade a spade. They will. Tear you a new one. <laughs> <laughs> or they'll if, point if, out your flaws. Or they'll point out your flaws. But very quite directly, too. Quite directly, <laughs> yes. So I'm happy that we're getting this peer review. And, and guys can look at what, I, what I've researched. And as I said, maybe I'm not the world's best networking guy. But then a networking guy has already uh, had tipped to rodent, has gone out there and had a look at the stuff and seen, hey, man, 
this stuff, this guy's actually talking some 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 sort of truth. Mm. And Rodent also in IRC. Th- um, uh, well, thanks to everybody who's joined us in IRC. Yeah. There's a lot of you tonight. Mm. Rodent has pointed out in IRC that that he's also noticed the fact that the flash, yes. the new Flash Media page went up fairly recently. Mm-hmm. Um, and so and so these things uh, these things add up, and and these are things that Net Dynamics have to answer to. Yes. Uh, for the truth to finally for the truth to find out. Yes. Um, and I think it's, it also needs to be made plain that uh, the South African technical community, at the very least, is not going to let up <laughs> until the truth is out. Yes. Um, and so um, I say Just submit the logs to people with the skills necessary to analyze them, mm-hmm. provide the data that you need to if you believe that your you've got your, your reach is wider than, you know, than, than just the streams or whatever, uh, and let it be analyzed. Well, there are people who can do this math. It yes. should be fairly easy. If you, look, if you look at the logs, and I'll say, if you then cross-correlate them against the patchy logs of where the guys are connecting to the players, you'll, you'll be out, you should have comparison of IPs and stuff like that just to prove the valid- yeah. validity. And you know, on on the scale, fifty thousand is a bit hard to, yeah. to fake things. It's it's, it it's, it's not rocket science either, and there are third party tools as well. Yeah, for for the, well, depending on what uh, streaming server you're using, you know, for instance, Shoutcast or whatever. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah, there's 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 a lot of ways they can actually just come back oh, at me. Look, looking through the patchy logs with set and grip. <laughs> mm. Five minutes. Mm. Um, all right, so um, we're gonna we're gonna go into another topic. Give everybody else to answer some <laughs> questions, gentlemen. I'm gonna leave it to you to watch this fast, fastly spinning IRC while I move the show along okay, by by one topic. And I think um, I want to mention. I, I think I'm actually just gonna gonna go straight, still in order to 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 keep the mixer happy. Uh, Lego in Chrome, which I thought was. <laughs> Apparently that's not in order. <laughs> what what is the next topic mixer? Okay, no, it's not. Um, a mindset learn. No, Lego. It was Lego. Lego's awesome. <laughs> Come Le- on, Le- Lego is not in order, <laughs> but it's okay. Um, I- I'll go in order. Mindset learn um, is going to start uh, streaming stuff. Let me, let me talk about that. Yes, uh, mindset learn is actually now finally streaming their uh, education channels live on the internet. Uh, you can get it to, if you go to mindset.co.za slash learn. What's the listener stats? Slash stream. Uh, it's still quite low. It only went live at the beginning of this week. So it doesn't have much advertising. It's going to be like every techie's question when anybody's stream goes live. <laughs> oh, that's it. I, 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 I know it's not low. I can, I can tell you, I'll, I'll look just now, I'll find, but I don't think there's much because we haven't been advertising. Mm-hmm. It literally went live Saturday or Sunday and we've just been tuning it a bit and getting the pages up. So I think And that also to be fair, I think it's school holidays. Yeah. Uh, and yes, this is, is uh, getting ready for the winter school hol- things. Mm. Uh, nice things about this, there is DVR functionality on it, so you can scroll back by eight hours or something like awesome. that. So, you, you know, if, if you miss something you on, and you want to go, so this these are the things that are on DSTV and all the rest of it uh, that cover all the curriculum for the South African students and stuff like that. Uh, we also have now integrated into Facebook, so there's a app you can put in which will put the play on Facebook and stuff like that. It's pretty much what you'll get from the site, so I'd say rather go to their site, just more it's easier for discovery and stuff like that. Mm. That's um, brilliant because it reminds me of, uh, for instance, all the, the universities in the, the US that have their lecture streams Sta- Stanford available comes on, to mind, yeah, I think, yeah. yeah. That's, um, on YouTube, stuff. and yeah. this is mm-hmm. exactly what we need in this country because if you've got a bad teacher and you've got a little bit of bandwidth, come on, give us bandwidth. MTN, Vodacom, somebody, you've got to break it. Give us bandwidth. Because if you give bandwidth to these kids, bang, yeah. man. Uh, one and of the things we've lot. also tuned it down mm. quite a lot. So mm. it comes in different flavors. So if you've got mm. a lot of the band, you can watch a very nice quality stream. But if you mm. don't, we, we've dropped it down to below 100 kilobits per second uh, with, mm. with video and audio. That's great. Um, oh. So the guys can watch it on their Blackberries or mm. whatever. That's cool. exactly where you want to be going. Mm. And it's mm-hmm. good. Um, look, and I know they also then upload this stuff to YouTube. So if you've even missed it at that point, you can uh, watch further. Clicks, so this yeah. is the live stuff as the teacher's going. So I know they also then have questions via Twitter and a whole bunch of other yeah, methods. Questions via Twitter, so Facebook. So you can be watching on the internet. 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 If you don't have DSTV or one of the others at home, um, you can still be watching it on live. And, and, or if you're out and about, you can still be watching it. That's brilliant. Mm. Really, really cool. Rad. So um, then next up is Facebook. Uh, changing everybody's default email addresses. This, look, what do you expect from Facebook? But damn, this irritated me. I like read this like, no, never. Like, you know, oh, it's really? Just some guys. Never? You said never. Well, <laughs> it's like, Facebook. What's the chances that they've gone and done this? Facebook. Facebook. Pretty much, they went and changed 100%. your default email address 
<laughs> to the Facebook one that then will relay to one of your other email addresses. So, so if, if like my address, I think on Facebook is probably sean.dubery at gmail.com. At facebook.com. So now. they just take the Gmail out and they stick Facebook well, in. Well, you know, basically what they yeah. do is they take your profile name. So like oh, mine's, yeah, mine's tim.hawk or something oh. like that. So now I have, if you look up my email address on Facebook, the one that gets oh. advertised, it's tim.hawk at facebook.com. Not my, my, my default one, which I said, well, this is the one I want they, you to they, advertise. They do say that portions of Facebook are owned by the CIA. <laughs> so <laughs> it makes perfect sense. <laughs> well, look, it makes sense to me is that they released this whole Facebook email thing. Yeah. And it hasn't been doing that well. But yeah. it just irritates me. But you can Opt go in. in you in can't delete the email address, but you can disable it. And you and can revert to back to your yeah. original one. So go do that now. I'm yes. still giggling. I don't have Facebook. Right. So uh, another thing that's interesting that came out of Google today, uh, or Google this week, I should say, is Lego in Chrome. So for um, Australia, for us, Australia well, and New Zealand, you can do it in, even in if that you're not sense. There. Yes, um, I did actually play around with it a little bit. What they're letting you do is you say let's let's build, and they assign you a plot of land in Australia or New Zealand that you can build something on. Can I sell uh, it later? I'm virtual actually land, not sure, man. but no, oh, you not. mean the virtual land? No, no, no. <laughs> um, but they give you some <laughs> space. Developing property. You can build some stuff on. I think it's 32 by 32. Um, nice square of land. Build whatever you want, and then you can share it with other people after you're done. And it's Lego, mm. so they have <laughs> an enormous amount of blocks. And they just need to add Mindstorm, and then you've got Minecraft Lego. Lego Minecraft. Lego Minecraft. <laughs> exactly. In Australia, Could, which we, is we did have one question that I picked up quickly. Yes. Um, which you sort of have covered. I'm just going to make sure that you know, Sean. How do you feel about the Bulls video interview? Um, look, I I I thought it went really badly for me. I thought it, I, I thought I didn't want to watch it afterwards when it came up on YouTube. I was like, I was on the call. I don't need to watch this. It's. I was like, I don't, I don't even know if I got anything across. And then I was at a friend's house, uh, and he just he he wanted to show it to his his wife. So he played it, and I was like, well, okay, fine, I'll listen to it. And in the end, I was like, hey, wait a minute. I actually, I think I handled it pretty well, considering Look, the attacking uh, I, I stance that was being I think the way being, it sounded like he surprised you, uh, you, mm. you did handle yeah. it very well. There was a little bit of an EP measuring contest there, uh, with I have a YouTube channel with 800,000 views. <laughs> oh, yeah, at the I end. I have a YouTube channel uh, of 120,000 views, actually had which is still inaccurate. About that. I've had queries about that. Um, uh, firstly, like obviously, there was the my YouTube's bigger than yours. I mean, whatever. I, I was just trying to. When you, you know, are in an antagonistic, or an, exactly. when you are being antagonized yeah. in a situation, I know your, your fight or flight instinct kind of yes, kicks in, exactly, right? So, exactly. Um, and then, but obviously, do you regret sort of taking the tack that you did there? Uh, like I said in a tweet later, I should have used my slow voice because <laughs> the slow voice. Let's. Uh, it sounds more intelligent generally, and and just let's gives you more time to think. Gives you more time to think exactly, um, and then of course he baited me with some uh, with the social media stuff. W w yeah, but there was also the the thing about oh, so you want to work for us? And I'm like, no, I don't want to work for you. It's just I've written software that measures stats accurately, kind of thing. So he thought he he was trying to find he was trying to create a motivation for me. Yes, which which is by the way why absolutely at the beginning I, I wanted to talk about your vested interest and yes, your motive yes. for doing this because it is a valid question. Yes, uh, even though it you know regardless you can you can be from Ant Farm and yeah. and have produced this report. It doesn't actually diminish the uh, you know the, the argument yes. yet uh, yes. until some counter stats come come mm -hmm. out. It doesn't diminish the argument, but. Uh, people do want to know what your vested interests are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so in some, yeah, the I mean, it's it was a, a surprise, but then I set myself up for it. So I should have actually been expecting a little bit more. I mean, uh, Darren Scott, that he he does those sort of things. Um, Look, he, so he, he, in my opinion, he came across as very, very badly in, in the Darren Scott. Uh, I, I actually, there there was a press release or something where he's. Kind of, I, I don't know. I, I swear. There's, uh, there's uh, anyway. There's been a, a discussion about that video from coming from Balls. I think Balls have released a press release, and there's a bit of a maybe we were a bit too aggressive distancing themselves vibe. Yeah. Well, not distancing, but but definitely saying, saying we over. We may have overreacted or uh, overreacted slightly. Yeah. We're emotional sort of about thing. it. I must so say that from the reports of the guys who who have been um, speaking to to Darren Scott for the articles we've done on my broadband, um, uh, he he has been um, 
level-headed yeah. and helpful. Okay, and, cool. Uh, uh, so, so to date. Yeah. So well, the thing is, and, and we we don't know how much they were kept in the dark. Yeah. This is, this is. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, we're not going to rush it. So I know, yeah. I know we're running late, cool. but the mixer's just letting us know we are running late. So that's why we what, paused there. One thing I just want to add: in all this, we we don't, from all our the evidence, we don't think the radio stations were doing this. We we yeah. believe they were being given mm. stats that. I do that think the ra- radio stations should have been a bit more cautious and suspicious. No, look, but it's just uh, but sorry coming from another thing. If, if you're yeah. not technically minded and you've yeah. relied on somebody else and you're they're paying, giving information, you're paying someone else for you, that You believe what they say. Exactly. Um, yeah. yeah. Y- you wouldn't if, question suppose, otherwise. Yeah. So I must just say, just mm. in defense Fair of enough, them. Yes. Um, y- yes, if you're a technical guy working on the servers and you suddenly see this you'd huge uptick, you more suspicious, you yes. But I don't think most of the guys involved in this, you know, the DJs and stuff, they're not people who are working no, at that level of dealing with not this stuff. Not at all, yeah. So, um, luckily, we've got more happy topics to, uh, <laughs> to land the show with. Um, please do keep firing questions through as you think of them. Um, and the, the, the next thing is in at the crossroads, uh, which I thought was very cool. So, for, very those cool. Of, for those of you who are fans of... Uh, a song of the song of ice and f- a, st- a song of ice and fire or the game of thrones th- series this is a website where uh you l- l- that that includes the dishes from the game of thrones thrones series so t- to read the blurb in the game of food you win or you wash the dishes <laughs> it's a food blog blog dedicated to developing recipes around the delicious meals that J- uh, george r r martin uh describes in his books and and if you've read his books you will know that he goes into exquisite detail in every meal. You know, the <laughs> duck that's basted in this thing with this side dish, and that's how it was prepared. It's like he's sitting uh, with a cookbook next to him as he's writing these pieces. So, um, so if you're a fan of the series, you can treat your stomach to some delicious Game of Thrones noms. Hmm. Then um, Mass Effect 3 has received its extended cut downloadable content, as we call it now. <coughs> Back in the day, we used to just call it a patch. Uh, n- nowadays... <laughs> oh, okay. I was wondering what you were saying. <laughs> <laughs> nowadays, we call Back it in the day. downloadable content. <laughs> and um, so what this is about is Mass Effect 3 was released to great critical acclaim, and then people got to the ending. And, uh, well, critics still think the game was solid and good, but people there were, are a lot of people that were unhappy with the ending of Mass Effect okay. 3. And it, it, it's basically about the build-up to how, uh, without getting too much into spoilers, if you're absolutely spoiler-reverse, you need to close your ears right now. If you, if you can handle somebody making vague, saying vague things about a story, then you can keep listening. I know there are people that are very spoiler-reverse out there. So basically the build-up of the game was that there were going to be these massive amounts of endings. And uh, it's not just going to be your standard ABC choice. Is were the words of the lead director, the lead producer on the game, the lead designer, I should say, rather, um, Casey Hudson. And... <laughs> And then you get to the ending and they present you with options A, B, or C. <laughs> and so people were very unhappy about <sighs> this. Uh, yeah. And, uh, and so uh, they've released this extended cut DLC to try and assuage, uh, assuage the, the people who were unhappy about the ending. They did say in the blog post that this will not make everybody happy. There were a lot of people asking for the endings to be changed completely. There were a lot of people with very in-depth theories of... Uh, what was really happening. And I must say, having played through it, I managed to do three endings last night before falling into bed. And I'm not happy. Mm. I'm, I'm in the camp of people that's not happy with the way they did it, uh, with the endings in general. Um, but then again, um, while I love the Mass Effect 3 series, I didn't like the ending of Mass Effect 1. Mass Effect 3 series, huh? The Mass Effect series. <laughs> I, liked the, I, li- I didn't like the ending of Mass Effect 1. The ending of Mass Effect 2 was more satisfying. Yeah. Mass, so, I mean, uh, you know, you were already sort of one for two there. Uh, so having the series end on a less than satisfying note isn't that big a surprise. Ending a series like this is always going to be a challenge, but it's still disappointing to me. When, when you see it and you see all the feedback from the community and you look at this thing and, and, it, and you, you go, it could have been better. Your whole community is telling you how you can do this better, and you just ignore them. Uh, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm fairly unhappy 
with the Mass Effect series in general. It's not as bad as The Matrix, um, but it was still pretty... Pretty cool. unsatisfying. Anyway, from and I, Matrix I'm, I'm, betting, bad? I'm betting you the sequels, the <laughs> yeah, Mass Effect sequels were at least three. better than Dragon Age. Oh, I Dragon Age what, what, what Matrix sequels? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. It's only the first point. ones that <laughs> didn't make sequels. It's, it's it. like those prequels that, uh, that George Lucas was always talking about making for Star Wars that yeah. he never did. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, it, 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 they would have been, been nice. so awesome. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, from, from that into something. And I always more. wondered what happened if, if Han would shoot first. <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> so. <laughs> Moving along. <laughs> yes. Fr- from that into something a bit more happy. Um, next episode's going to be our 100th. Uh, very S- imminent. Century. You just had to write imminent in there, didn't you? <laughs> that wasn't me. That the word imminent was... is in the dark. Yes. Um, it was the mixer. Just just oh, read through no. this from the mixer. This is the words. Uh, next week, we're recording episode 100 of LTG. This is a big achievement for us, and we would should be Celebrate. and should be celebrated. Yes. Uh, more importantly, though, we want to have some kick-ass show, the most kick-ass show ever. We would like some suggestions, comments from you, the viewers, about what we, we can do to make it truly epic. Without giving away like over 50,000 rands worth of equipment, please. Uh, <laughs> remember, we're all just wage <laughs> slaves. From topic suggestions to show format suggestions, uh, to get suggestions, any ideas, drop us a mail at the big 100 at Let's Talk Network TV. Cool. If you're going to make a guest suggestion, cool. please do it like, tomorrow. Yeah, today, tomorrow. Uh, without uh, uh, g- uh, going into uh, copyright uh, infringement uh, and maybe, uh, you know, just before the weekend so we can fire uh, off some and, and please not something like the Queen. <laughs> you know, something well, somebody we which, can get. Which Queen? <laughs> 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 yeah. All right. Taking us into our kicker. Holy levitating slinky, Batman. This is awesome. So the it's, it's really an interesting problem, right? We've been talking about interesting problems all show, really, but this one is a happy problem to solve, is why, and, and unfortunately, um, it's a pity we can't show the video for fear of YouTube flagging us, but why, when you hold a slinky, uh, or release a slinky, does, does the, and you extend it fully from, say, a building, mm-hmm. and you release it, the bottom does not fall. If the bottom stays completely in place, and the it collapses, oh. and only then, like, when, when it sort of touches... Do, does, continue it start, falling. does it continue falling to the ground, right? So, um, and it's very interesting to see. And, and there has been work done on this in the early 2000s already, if I'm not mistaken. But there's been now some fairly hardcore modeling done on this. Computer modeling and slow, slow um, video. What do you call that? Slow, like slow very, motion. Very slow motion video. What, like those, like um, high-speed cameras. Like, yeah. We're talking <laughs> a couple of thousand frames yeah, per like, second. Like that series, whatever they're called. Yeah, yeah. Um, say again. Time, time warp. warp. Those mm. guys. This is the kind of slow motion video capture that they do. Do you want to give a brief rendition why this occurs? All right. So basically, um, the the uh, the theory uh, in the uh, science sense of the word theory um, is that the center of mass of the slinky changes as it collapses on itself. As so, it's it's a spring, right? So yes. as it collapses, its center of mass moves. So um, so like it it is. Falling, falling the but, center mass. but relative to its center of mass. Added to this, because it's a spring, the bottom's actually being pulled up all the time at the rate that it's falling, effectively. Yes. Mm. So, so it stays, but it's amazing how, I mean, S- your mind actually is. just boggles because it stays absolutely stationary. But when you work out the forces and you, and you look at the modeling, it absolutely works. So there will be a link. Uh, in the show notes, and I if believe you're watching on YouTube, it'll be done in the doobly doo. Yeah, and we will be banging a link into yeah, YouTube and into IRC. Um, if you want to look at the math, it is hardcore stuff. And in retrospect, I should have pasted it into the slide. Um, but yeah, like very accurately modeled as to why the Slinky does what it does. It was awesome. Go and check it, it out. And it, it will blow your mind. Me. It's mm. that it's that thing you learn every day. So maybe I was one <laughs> of the t- lucky ten thousand, but uh, I'm fairly sure I wasn't. This is important stuff. Why do slinkies hover? And with that. And can we <laughs> and tie them that. to the bottom of our cars and then we and make hover our cars. Cars. <laughs> hoverboards? We were hoverboards. promised <laughs> hoverboards. Yes, we are. By 2015. <laughs> we were promised hoverboards. By 2015. That's fine. <laughs> we have another three years. Go. <laughs> <laughs> Infinite slinkies um, can be done. Where, where can we find our guest? Okay. Dubri.co.za is my blog. Um, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna ignore you on Facebook, Twitter. I'm at Sean S H A U N. 
And you can mail me, Sean, at dubery.co.za. Are you on Google Plus? I am on Google. Well, so yes, I found you kind of the same I've thing got, on Facebook. I've got, a, I've people. got a Google Plus account. I don't think I could technically be called on Google Plus. <laughs> I don't know. Is anyone on Google Plus? I'm on yep. Google Plus. <laughs> it's I mean, strange enough, there's very <laughs> technical. Yep. If you want to discuss something technical, yeah. Google Plus is the place. Really? Because okay. you tend, I tend I'm more of a commenter than a and poster. It has yeah. a surprisingly good photography community. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Be- because of Picasa and yeah. the auto uploads. The, the problem I had was actually getting content out of Google Plus. Oh. Uh, there's lots of stuff that feeds into Google Plus, like um, if this, then that. Oh, yeah, they've yeah. got no APIs for Google Plus that are publicly nothing, accessible. Nothing they have the APIs to we'll read out. We'll see what out. comes out this nothing week. Nothing to read in. No, but it's, yeah, oh, okay. it's read out. So if you use Google Plus as your source of all your content, you can spit it out to Twitter, Facebook, et cetera, yes. et cetera. Mm-hmm. But you can never push it. Yeah, there are no way. proper apps, and yeah. I, I don't spend my uh, days in the Google one, Plus. One thing, I know Hootsuite now has the ability to post to Only to, for enterprise customers that fork out the big bucks. Yeah. Sorry, mm-hmm. I've asked. That's why. <laughs> and, I and I think they did this to stop what happened to a lot of other clients. Well, what stopped what happened to Twitter, which is like the whole revenue stream got gone. And, 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 yeah. and also what happened to Buzz. Uh, where basically became a way of posting to Twitter. Mm. Oh yes, yeah, or, I hated that. You know, and it's basically they wanted when you post in there, you, you're not going to use something else to basically to repost your there, your yeah, Twitter exactly. stream or repost your Facebook stream. You want you've gone there to actually physically post there, and then you're going to push that to everything else. Mm. Mm. So yeah, you can do a search on Sean Dubery on Google Plus, and you'll probably find me there too. You, you do come up. Yes. <laughs> All right, cool. Cut it. Where can people find you? About dot me slash hockey's za. Easy enough. Yep. Ah, oh, let's go. You can find me on Google+. Plus. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Oh, yeah, have you given up on Twitter? Yeah. I, look, I'm occasional. The problem is I'm just so busy at the moment now that yeah. with a lot of these, anything that's real time, I'm going to miss. Right. Fair um, enough. Mm. So the, the, I'm finding the Facebooks and the Google+, Plus is far more because I can go. Actually, Facebook's actually even better if you want to get a hold of me because it actually stays prominent longer if you message it. Mm. Plus, also fine is a bit, bit quick, but I'm more likely to see it there. Mm. Uh, I'm Jan Vermeulen. I write for my broadband, so you can find me there. That's where I spent uh, most of my days. But I'm also on Twitter at Jan VZA. And on Google Plus occasionally, uh, Jan Vermeulen, Circle the Ugly Guy. And uh, with that, go like our Facebook page, <laughs> Twitter, etc., etc. Insert relevant plugs here. Go to LTE, Let's Talk Network TV, and click all the like buttons. Yes. All the things. <laughs> Thank you very much. If you enjoyed this show, there's more like it. Uh, 98 others like it, in fact. Um, and we've got other shows in our archive as well. Um, you can l- find them all on Let's Talk Network TV. Not all of them on YouTube. Yeah, no. but some of them on YouTube. Yeah. Cool. With that, thank you for watching. And thank you to everybody who joined us tonight to hear Sean's side of the story. We, we broke our record of live viewers. Cool. <laughs> uh, so what were our stats? <laughs> uh, I've been updating it, but I know we basically peaked at about 50. We did peak at 50, um, though we averaged for most of the thing at about 45, 46, and we back down to 40 now. Cool. Excellent. Do I have to double check? <laughs> You're <laughs> welcome. <laughs> I'll give you the stuff. Shall we order those? Cool. Thank uh, you very I much. I have it broken down to what they were using to watch it. <laughs> Thanks very much for joining us. Uh, see you next week. Cool. Cheers. <laughs>